sorry, I occupied this part of the table, but this is the best place. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, it's work. Uh, sorry, you can see it's uh, worth the record. It's uh, on the screen. Oh, there is a. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's good. Oh. Rick. Oh, yes. Okay, uh, yeah, because uh, once uh, I took a lecture, and uh, this was one of my best lectures all of my life. My I forgot to push the button. <laughs> Inspire. <Yeah. laughs> Therefore, at the beginning of each lecture, I have a panic. It's, it's I, I push the button or not. Okay. It's a psychological problem. So uh, today, this is the last uh, last uh, uh, last lecture of introductory uh, lecture series, and uh, we try to define each of uh, uh, crucial terms and uh, scientific background of evolution of environmental history. Yeah, you can pick uh, one piece of uh, today's lecture. But uh, this slide uh, left from the last week lecture, but uh, this is the new one. I hope it's enough because uh, it's uh, a little bit underestimate uh, number of participants because uh, the first uh, student who arrived to the lecture room, I told that there is a rhythm of audience presence at the beginning and uh, at the end, of course, highest one. Uh, of course, because uh, the first uh, necessary have to learn the basic condition of the of the of the visiting manner and the, <laughs> before the exam necessary to, to know each other with the uh, lecture. So uh, uh, we spoke about the scientific background of environmental theory. The first one, early environmentalists, who try to. Uh, de uh, describe the interaction between physical environment. You remember I spoke about Buffon, uh, who very optimistic uh, scholar, and according to his uh, concept, necessary to domest domesticate everywhere, whole of the whole of the earth, uh, plants and animals, and the landscape. The second one, George Perkins Marsh, who very pessimistic and describe the history of uh, humankind as uh, a, a trajectory of decline and finally will disappear all of the civilization. This is the first one. The second one, geographers, a different geographers who try to describe the interaction between physical environment and society and the very important advantage of geographer, geography is uh, somehow unify the social and the natural sciences because there is a social geography and natural or physical geography. Okay, we arrive to the history. Anna School, the first historical school who organized a revolution according against the traditional history. Why necessary to organize a revolt? Because a traditional history founded on the time of national state, formation of national state. The nation, it's a new creation. Nation didn't exist in the historical past. If we are looking for, for example, a Mongolian Empire, or China, or for example, medieval France, or medieval Hungary, it's not a national state. Empire, under direction of one dynasty, or other dynasty. No empire, no, no national state. Nationalism, a common culture and a common language constructed only on the time of enlightenment, on the time of French Revolution, as a crucial and directing, guiding force of formation of the state. Why? For example, very, in, very interesting indicator. Why necessary to kill each other? On the Middle Ages, killed each other for religious problem. For example, heretics or Catholic, or Muslim or Catholic. One side, uh, crusade, 
other side jihad, killed each other for religion, not by chance in Europe describe a European civilization as Christendom, as not Europe, Christendom, because uh, you know which is the identity. Identity, it's uh, somehow a creation of, uh, of persons, creation of uh, face of uh, civilization, which is the up on the identity structure. On the Middle Ages, a religion. And guided the position of, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, one person on the verb. In recently, it's a nation, a nationality. Changed the hierarchy, a position of the identity element on the hierarchy. Okay, uh, and uh, when formed a history, this is the birth of national state. Therefore, in the 19th century, describe the first generation of historian, the history of nation. It's artificial construction because in the Middle Ages, no nation, no nation. If you're looking, for example, looking at Hungarian history, in Hungarian, Hung Hungary lived a lot of different uh, nationalities. A Slavic people, Hungarian people, uh, uh, German, different uh, tribes of the Germans, German people uh, and Teutonic, it's a Middle uh, Ages terms, not important because the construction of the state is different. But in the 19th century, the first generation of the historian described the history of, for example, Hungary, Romania, Serbia, Germany, France as history of nation. Not by chance, the traditional history, a political history, military history, and legal or history of law. This is the first generation. And Anna School and the leader of the Anna School, Lucien Febvre and Marc Bloch, try to describe the history different now. Because not only the political activity, not the great man uh, uh, formed the history, everybody, you and me, able to form the history. Not only the great man. This is the job of whole of the human. And uh, introduce new term. Histoire totale, it's a French term. Total history. Total history, in the last occasion I spoke about, a total history means everything which did the human on the past is subject of historical research. Not only uh, the deeds of, uh, of great men, generals, or kings, or queens, or or, or noblemen, not everybody's deed, it's subject of the, of the uh, history. A long durée, long durée, long duration. Not only short generation rhythm important in the history, but the uh, long term, uh, uh, a lot of centuries term. For example, history of uh, Roman Catholic Church, history of global economy, unfolded much longer term uh, comparing with the generation with them. And regional synthesis. Regional synthesis necessary to analyze a region. Not only the country. Why? Because the country, this is the result of a military campaign and a marriage between dynasty. Artificial construction. A region, it's a, somehow there is a guiding force which organizes a region. For example, we are living in Hungarian plain. Plain area. It's a region. But Hungarian plain connected to Serbia, Romania, Hungary, uh, and, uh, and a little bit uh, Croatia. It's a region. Region which cut it in different parts the political boundaries. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not so interesting. Anal, this is the journal. It's a general rhythm of the, of the uh, discipline, of the, of the science. If appear a new direction of research, it's organized around a new journal. Anna, it's, a, it's a, somehow a, a historical documentary sources, Anna, which published year by year, uh, borrowed from the documentary sources and changed the name. The first version, Anna d'Histoire, Economie Sociale, Economic and the Social History. Later, Histoire Sociale. Later, on the time of the Second World War, Mélange d'Histoire Sociale and the uh, Anal Histoire Sociale. And very interesting, this is the most important period of Anna, quite strange,
because a French scholar never influenced the global historical uh, research and then its historical thinking, except this period. A la economic society civilization. It's a global view, global view, global understanding uh, how unfolded uh, our history. Okay, the most important person, Emmanuel Leroy Laduri. Uh, no, 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 seven and brother and the third generation. I, I met personally uh, Emmanuel Leroy Laduri some years ago, but he was the founder of a uh, of, uh, uh, great period of Anna School. Okay, look at the last, almost the last school, ecologist. Look at the ecologist. Okay, don't expire today's lecture, but look at the next slide series. Okay. So, yeah, this is the trajectory. Early environmentalist, geographer, Anna School, ecologist. A little bit, I will speak about the American school because it's not a disciplinary school, but somehow it's a, a special taste of environmental thinking based on American experiences. A little bit literature, a little bit disciplines, but uh, it's American experiences. Uh, quite a special. Okay, look at ecologists. You pro probably you know which is the ecology. Ecology, one sub-discipline of uh, biology. Uh, the first representative of uh, ecology, Alexander Humboldt. His life, his biography, it's a good example that the people on the time of life not able to decide a good or bad event, good or bad news. Because he was a member of aristocracy, a German aristocracy. Uh, on the time of the uh, traditional period, uh, not the life and the, and, the, and, the, and the studies, not a personal decision, wasn't a personal decision of uh, contemporaries, but decision of parents. He was a member of aristocracy, therefore two trajectory possible for him. One, a military career and the second one a governmental career. But both of his parents uh, 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 died very early period, therefore he heard whole of the fortune of his family, therefore freely decided which is the good uh, life, good, good studies for him. And he studied natural sciences in Göttingen, Frankfurt and Göttingen. And later, he traveled to uh, South America, this is the age of discoveries, and he founded a uh, botanical geography. It's uh, recently the knowledge which uh, published in his uh, studies and books and articles, it's well known, which is the connection with the uh, environment, physical environment and climate, and the plants. It's very simple, but very simple. But on the time, on his period, like for example, you know the uh, the law of Archimedes. Archimedes. It's a quite uh, basic knowledge. But on the time of Archimedes, this was the university level. But recently, it's a, it's a little bit uh, fell down and became a uh, knowledge of elementary school uh, subject. Uh, this is the same situation in the. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, Alexander Humboldt, uh, he was the first person who descri described systematically the connection between climate, physical environment, and the plants. The second one, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, very interesting person. Generally, you know his name. He, well, he introduced the theory of uh, evolution. But very interesting, he studied natural science, science in Glasgow, uh, was, uh, sorry, in Edinburgh, but later he studied Cambridge a theology. A theology. Very surprising uh, was when I read this information because he destroyed the biblical uh, worldview uh, totally. But he was a graduated theologist. Very interesting. Uh, okay, he uh, tra traveled the whole of the world uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with one uh, not so good uh, uh, the, uh, the quality of this beamer, but this is the 
northern, southern part of America, and Eurasia, India, Africa. He traveled all over the world, and uh, uh, after a very interesting, he was 23 years old. 23 years old. Very interesting. If uh, I read a lot of uh, uh, biography, and uh, the trajectory of life in the traditional time basically different. The people uh, around the 20 years old period, it's totally adult and independent. Recently, the longest period on the on the personal life, it's adolescence. Start around 10 years and close the worst case around the 20, uh, 40, sorry, 40 years old. It's longest one. In the traditional time, the adolescence, two, three years. And very early became a dad, the people, with the task, with the obligation of task and responsibility and so on and so on. Uh, very interesting, my mother uh, told to me, I was born, uh, my mother was uh, 30, 35 years old. And in the hospital, he very shamed because so old. And recently, the first birth in Hungary after the 30 years, in the case of uh, mother, 30 years anniversary. And for example, uh, 50 years ago, it's, it's always a shame if somebody uh, born after, was born after uh, 30 years. Yeah, and if somebody, for example, the, 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 the majority of personal performances performed after 50, uh, 50 years anniversary. Therefore, the most important active period, much lower, much uh, uh, shorter, the life expectancy, of course. But the structure of life basically different. Okay, turn back to the story of uh, Charles Darwin. After a long travel of him, uh, only two times travel long time on the sea. You know why? This was the first. And never again traveled around the world, but never only once a shorter uh, travel performed, but never again a Darwin traveled on on, on uh, ship. Why? He was a sea sea, you know, the vomit. Uh, uh, and and uh, and uh, no any curing for for this guy. It's very serious sick of sea and never traveled again. It's, it's an important vacuity of his life. Uh, you know who was the other English people who was so tragical seasick? Admiral Nelson. One of the greatest admiral whole of the uh, Br uh, British history. He was a homesick. Uh, so not, not homesick, that's different. Seasick. The sick of sea. Good. Yeah, but uh, uh, jump back. Which is the key key concept of the of the of the uh, Darwin? The last words: struggle for life. This is the most important guiding force of evolution, according to Darwin. Struggle for survival among animals and the humans. Okay, the founder of ecology, a German person. 19th century was a great period of uh, German science. Uh, Ernst Haeckel, he constructed the term of ecology from Greek roots. Ecology came from ecolo uh, ecology, eco, or ecos, habitation. Logi, or logos. It's a science of habitation, science of, uh, of, uh, of uh, place where able the, uh, the living plants and, and animals survive. And very dangerous conclusion of him, a uh, name, a uh, social Darwinism, probably you know, uh, the most uh, tragical adaptation of social Darwinism, the Nazism in Germany. Politics is applied biology. We can see, for example, the concentration camp from this perspective. In the last occasion, uh, in the case of term of Lebensraum, which introduced the geographer, I told you that the modern political life only picked 
the theory and the information from the disciplinary field, like, for example, uh, uh, social Darwinism. Okay, uh, Ernst Haeckel defined the ecology. By ecology, we mean the body of knowledge concerning the economy of nature, the investigation of the total relation of the animals, both in organic and organic environment, uh, including about all friendly and inimically relation of those animals and plants with, uh, with which uh, it comes directly or indirectly into contact. In a word, ecology, a study of those complex interrelations referred to by Darwin as the condition of struggle for existence. This is the original definition of ecology. Okay. The next uh, milestone of history of ecology, Eduard Suez, Austrian geologist, who introduced the biosphere, conception of the biosphere. Living plants and animals is a part of the same empire which named a biosphere. Carl uh, Mubius, a uh, good example uh, that a creative person able to uh, create in uh, artificial condition a great invention. Uh, it's possible it, the same experience will happen with you. He graduated but didn't receive job. It's, it's the most critical period it's somebody graduated and, and falling out from education system. Because the education starts with kindergarten and closed with university. University is the best one. I compare with any others. Uh, I remember uh, how I hated the kindergarten. If my mother didn't uh, pick my hand, I run every morning. And uh, for example, jump to the, the mud, for example, and my mother brought at home and cleaned me and bring back, uh, rode back to the kindergarten. Okay, but if somebody fallen out or fell, fell, fell out, fell out, fell out from the, uh, from the university, necessary to find a job. And Karl Möbius, for years, no any chance for a job. And finally, he received a job on oyster farm. You know which is the oyster? Well, you know, oyster. It's edible animal. Not so active life. Uh, and uh, for a scientist, for a scholar, for a researcher, it's a worse place. Necessary pour uh, hot water and the feeds and, and any other. But he was a creative person and analyzed in which physical condition optimal and which physical condition bad for uh, growing of oyster. And introduced a new science, uh, 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 biosynthesis. This is the community of animals and the condition of the animals which optimal and which not good for growing. Okay. Uh, the next important milestone of evolution, uh, in the trajectory of evolution of ecology, the introduction of concept of ecosystem. The person who introduced, a British scholar, Arthur G. Tansley, Tansley uh, introduced uh, in the 30s a conception of ecosystem. According to definition of uh, Tansley, the ecosystem uh, is the whole system including not only the organism, like plants and animals, but also the whole complex physical factors forming what we call the environment, the physical environment. But but the recently used definition of ecosystem is introduced by Eugene Paul Adam, is an American scholar. Uh, look at uh, his definition. According to Adam's definition, uh, ecosystem, any unit that includes all of the organism, for example, the community, in a given area. The first crucial term, given area. What means the given area? A given area means in ecosystem, no hierarchy. You know the, uh, the Matteo doll? Matteo doll, this is the small one, it's a Russian doll. Small one, larger one, larger one, larger one. And there is a hierarchy from the largest one and the smallest one. This is the same in the case of geography. There is a macro region, 
middle region and micro region. In the case of eco ecology, no hierarchy. Maybe a uh, ecosystem, one puddle on the pavement, and maybe all of the universe. No hierarchy. Uh, ecosystem and ecology don't want to describe and structure whole of the whole of the universe. Analyze are uh, identical ecosystems. Okay. Interacting with the physical environment and flow of energy. Uh, I have a necessary to speak a little bit of physical knowledge. You know the first uh, law of uh, uh, for, for first law of energy. You remember from the studies of physics? On the universe, the quantity of the energy is constant. You know, this is the first law of energy. No creation, no consummation, because steady, but only transformation. One form to other. Physical energy to chemical energy. Heating energy to physical energy. Therefore, the quantity of energy, whole of the universe, is steady. If we are looking at the human history as energetical history, which is the source of energy of human history? Sun. 99 percent, 99% of energy come from the sun. On the sun, there is a uh, uh, how the name is uh, uh, transformation of hydrogen to helium. Hydrogen to helium, and uh, this uh, thermonuclear, thermonuclear transformation, the source of, of ener each of energy on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Earth. For example, the fossil fuels, which sometimes were animals or plants or trees, it saved the energy of sun. Therefore, the human history we can describe as energetical history. 99%, which is the 1%? Volcano, volcanoes, inside of the, of the But 99% are sun. On the surface of Earth arrived the sunbeam. Thermonuclear energy. And uh, plants, uh, plants which able for photosynthesis, you know, which is the photosynthesis, able to transform the thermonuclear energy to chemical energy, chemical energy on the body of plants. And uh, very low rate of efficiency, one person, one person of thermonuclear energy, the plants on the surface of Earth transform via uh, photosynthesis to Chemical energy, a chemical energy, thermonuclear energy, chemical energy. 99% radiate everywhere. And all of the chain of consummation, like us, like you, we, in, the, in, the, in the chain of consummation, mean our feeding transform to heating energy and moving energy. There are different strategies. There are herbivores, herbivores which ate only plants. Yeah, uh, it's possible, I told you, uh, first of my uh, fellowship I received uh, to uh, Switzerland. I told you? No, not yet. Okay, it well, was very interesting because uh, uh, Switzerland is a little bit different country. And uh, uh, my first uh, fellowship received uh, at the beginning of the 90s, past and last century, uh, before your birthday. And uh, uh, first time I met with feminism. First time. Uh, on the student hostel, in the women toilet, a lot of graffiti. And uh, the male, <laughs> it's it's a good indicator of, of activism and the social and political activism. And sometimes, because it was artificial uh, separation, two toilets, only one sign, 
women, women and other one, it's a, it's a man. Sometimes I necessary to visit uh, uh, early morning in the women's side and a lot of graffiti. For example, one, two of my favorite was uh, the first one, uh, save the plants, kill vegetarians. <laughs> and the second one is uh, who is the name of women or women, we can generalize, uh, who know the place of his husband every time? Widow. Okay, so turn back to the story. Uh, her divorce, her divorce, who ate the plants and the university. Okay, her divorce. Omnivores like us who eat meat and, and uh, vegetables, and carnivores, predators like lion and, and his friends. And uh, very interesting, a chain of consumation means a transformation of chemical energy to moving energy and uh, heating energy because our body is approximately uh, 36 uh, Celsius degree, more or less. On the time of sickness, a little bit higher, and on the normal time, it's lower. If we die, it's maybe uh, much lower. Anyway, very important the efficiency of transformation. The humans able transform the chemical energy mean plants or meats the feed the meals anyway with 18 percent efficiency the meals energy transformed 18 percent uh, moving energy working capacity and the rest one 82 percent and heating energy it's expired uh, on the end but if we are looking at the domesticated animals like camel, like uh, horse, like cattle, much lower the rate of transformation. Only 10%. 10%. Not by chance, if we are looking at the human civilization until the industrial revolution, until the appearance of the modern engines like steam engines and later the, uh, the uh, other form of the, of, the, of, the, of the engines based on the oil, until the modernization, until the uh, uh, industrial revolution, if we are looking at the energy which used our uh, empires, 70% of energy, muscle energy of the humans, and only 30% of energy, animal, muscle, and the simple engines, like water mills, like wind mills, and the similar construction. Why? Because in the traditional uh, traditional society, the advantage of higher, higher rate of transformation of humans, much, it's a great advantage compared with animals. And this is the reason of long survival of slavery, a slavery. Which area apply the slavery? Area where very low density of population. For example, in America, northern and southern part of America, in low density of population area, very high value of slaves, no law moving everywhere, necessary to stay on the same time. Or other side, in Russia. In Russia, 30% of peasant until the Bolshevik Revolution was slave. Slave. Is hollow in hollow, uh, and uh, why? Because it's very high value of working power, and much, almost double the transformation rate with domesticated animals. 
Uh, you know, when prohibited the slavery in Europe and the global level, you know when? When uh, prohibited the slavery? After Napoleonian Wars. After Napoleonian Wars. Why? Because appeared the Industrial Revolution and the small advantage of human transformation expired because appeared a uh, steam engine, appeared a different other form of the engine, and the capacity of energy civilization is blow up. And advantage of human, not by chance, the last great war in the case of slavery was the in the, uh, civil war in the United States. Civil war of the United States. For a lot of reasons, but one uh, most important issue was the prohibition of the slavery. Okay, this is the flow of energy. Why so interesting? Because we can see the history, not only the perspective of Napoleon, Napoleon or the great generals or the great, great politicians, but we can see, according to the trajectory of energy, under this is the deep flow, deep uh, moving of society, which similar, which had similar importance like decision of the politician. Okay. Physical environment, so the flow of energy has to clearly define trophic structure, biotic diversity, material cycle, exchange, matter between living and non-living, with a system is an ecosystem. Good. Uh, what was the last uh, person? James Lovelock. James, Lovelock. James Lovelock life, uh, it's a good example of a creative person. He participated in a Mars project. You know which is the Mars? It's a planet. A planet. And uh, one of the most important uh, 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 scientific projects uh, uh, discovered there was or not life on the Mars. And recently, the public uh, uh, public decision of the of the of the of the of the scientists that wasn't life. Probably no or no long time existed life on the surface of the Earth. Uh, Mars, sorry. But he closed the research project and uh, he became independent scholar. And turn back to the question. Because the original question, when James Lovelock participated in the NASA project, there is or there is not life on the Mars. And closed the project, probably not. And uh, started a new project. There is, why there is life on the Earth? Because obviously, there is life on the Earth. But why? Why? Uh, and created a theory of Gaia. Look at the Gaia. According to the definition of, uh, of uh, James Lovelock, Gaia, Gaia, you know the goddess, a Greek goddess of Earth. Gaia, a complex entity involving the Earth's biosphere, atmosphere, ocean and soil, the totally constituting the feedback and cybernetic system which seek an, an optimal physical chemical environment for life on this planet. According to the uh, concept of uh, Lavlog, there is a self-sustainable system somehow in uh, geological past on the Earth, which evidence is uh, used for verification. The first one the global surface temperature of the Earth, the sun being the intensity of the solar radiation, uh, uh, Earth temp temperature is constant, but the solar radiation increased, came from the sun. The second one, atmospheric uh, uh, composition remained constant. Probably you know or remember which is the construction of the, of the atmosphere. Uh, 78 percent, approximately 78 percent uh, nitrogen, 21 oxygen, and any other carbon dioxide, and so on, and so on, and so on. Why so interesting? Because if the nitrogen, oxygen, if the proportion of oxygen increased, we can imagine, and the reach to 25 percent, everything which flammable burn should to be burned spontaneous burning. Not so far, 
only four first. But look at, for example, this is one disaster, one possible disaster. Increase the quantity of oxygen. And if reach a 25, everything, like this table, the trees, everything, or us, will burn with spontaneous burning. And according to the conclusion of, uh, of uh, Gaia hypothesis, somehow the cybernetic or, or self-sustainable system is, uh, say, this lower proportion of uh, oxygen. And ocean salinity is constant. You know, uh, I remember that ocean salinity is uh, 34 percent in the global ocean. But if reach the 5 percent, 99 percent of animals expire. But there are some advantage of high concentration of the of the salinity. Uh, for example, uh, some somebody visited in the Dead Sea in Near East. No? Not necessary to see the people able to float on the on the on the sea without swimming. And in the Carpathian Basin in Transylvania, there is a uh, lake. It's Lake uh, uh, Bear Lake. Bear Lake. Uh, in the central part of Transylvania, the similar. It's a high concentration of, uh, of salt and unbelievable. Sometimes I visit it, not necessary to swim, only floating, like a core, like a core. It's a delicious experience. Okay, look at the last one, American School. Uh, the founder of American environmental thinking, Henry David Thoreau. His situation was the same, like we can see in the case of uh, Austrian ecologists. He graduated in the Harvard University. You know the history of Harvard University? No? Very interesting. It's typical, typical example of uh, a, a Protestant ethic. You know which is the Protestant ethic described by um, uh, German scholar. I remember, I don't remember the name. Okay, but uh, he was a, a classical American Protestant, uh, John Harvard, John Harvard, a young priest, a young uh, uh, Protestant pastor. He was, I remember, uh, 35, very young, 35 years old when he died. And he uh, uh, wrote a testimony and founded a foundation. Harvard Foundation, and he had a large library, more than 30,000 uh, books. And his personal fortune took to the, his found Harvard Foundation and the personal library. And like Avalanche, you know which is the Avalanche, in the mountain area, a lot of people took a uh, donation and uh, books and da, 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 da. And recently, almost uh, uh, almost uh, 400 years later, one of the first university all of the world, all of the world, and starting with a small donation, small donation. Okay, uh, he graduated the Harvard University, no so high prestige like recently, and he didn't receive job. It's a tragical period. I remember from my personal life, uh, the last year. At the, at the university, we used every uh, devices which postpone the future, mainly alcohol. But <laughs> it's a closed country, no other option. Uh, but the option of Henry uh, David Toro was a little bit different. He left the civilization, he renaturalized himself and moved to one forest far from civilization. It's uh, named the Valden. He lived far from civilization for uh, three years and wrote uh, novels and uh, poems. And very interesting because interwoven the Puritan tradition and the Indian uh, uh, local Aboriginal Indian uh, tradition in his poems. And each environmentalist in the United States derived his concept from David Toro. Somehow, 
the David Toro's life a starting point of the American environmentalist because uh, somehow interwoven a uh, uh, European traditional Puritan Protestant uh, uh, theology and the Indian meets very interesting combination and construction. Uh, a very interesting founder, important founder and the godfather of environmental history, Roderick Nash. Uh, one of his articles he was America contributed three things only uh, the world civilization, coke, the first one, uh, basketball and the national parks. And very interesting, the first, first national parks is uh, founded in the United States. But the original American national parks basically differ from the recent uh, scientized uh, natural parks. Much more, somebody knows the Yogi Bear, uh, the cartoons of Yogi Bear. Uh, uh, Yogi Bear is uh, uh, still uh, baskets, uh, uh, mules baskets on the, on the national parks, and the hunter of national parks is hunting to Yogi Bears. You know, it, it's a quite old American cartoon. Okay, uh, basically, uh, original national parks, a picnic area for people living in the, uh, in the cities. The first protected area was the Ogre Mountain, East Coast, and the second one, Central Park. It's a very interesting story. In the core area of uh, uh, New York was the second protected area, all of the United States. And the Yosemite Valley and the first the national parks was the Yellowstone. Okay, and the founder of globalized ecological thinking was Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson, a good example of American intellectuals. Uh, generally, a Europeans like me, like probably you, a little bit disdain the American because it's quite a silly people, a able to write or, or read at very low level, and we are the uh, representatives of, of global civilization. It's very dangerous. Look at, for example, the rank list of universities. In the first 100, there is uh, a half of that American university. American university. But a little bit different the construction of, uh, of American education, because basically there are two structures, two constructions of education. A European uh, school system and the American school system. Look at the first um, uh, European school system. A European school system is basically uh, the, the student, the pupils living under pressure of of uh, of, uh, of uh, parents and a uh, uh, teacher. Look at, for example, the kindergarten. In the best kindergarten necessary to learn to read. The, first, the, the best student, the best student, best pupil who go to the elementary school, the most important skills, no yet in the kindergarten. Why? Because this, there is a passing exam. And this is the same story from elementary school to secondary school, necessary to hurry under pressure of student uh, sorry, uh, teacher and uh, parents and uh, and this is the same story repeat in the secondary school and when you arrive to the uh, university, burn down, burn down and no ambition, no ambition, it's a quite a general I remember, I uh, studied in American school, it's not mean a good school, it's very low, very low quality of the school I remember I was 17 years old when two following years, uh, days I, I learned. Because in the village, in the small village, the level of elementary school is very low. Very, very low. Not necessary, but not so dangerous. Why? Because look at the history. In the elementary school, you learn the history from the uh, Australopithecus formation of human until the recent time. Look at the secondary school. Start with formation of humans and close the recent time. And look at the university start with evolution of human and close the recent time. Therefore, necessary to compensate a lot of times, a lot of times if past the knowledge, is past the love. Uh, look at the American school. In the case of American school, no 
high pushing for learn. And basically, the most important, uh, European school based on the knowledge necessary to learn a lot. American school based on the construction of the character. For example, arguing, a discussion, debate, skills necessary to, to know, and very interesting to learn, necessary to, necessary to know that at the end of trajectory from kindergarten in United States or Canada, or kindergarten of, for example, Germany, and to university, both trajectory not the same, not the same. Only the rhythm of learn is different. It's different. If somebody don't want to go to university, it's very silly in United States. But if somebody able to pass the university, not the same in Europe than in Europe. Therefore, the structure of education, but the final re result is the same almost. Okay, and because the level, the, the general reader level in the United States very low, much lower compared with Europe. A very important mission of American scholar write about the science, scientific research, research results for general reader. And it's very good investment. Why? Because it's necessary to vote for scientific investment, the general reader vote on the side of science. Okay, and uh, therefore, American uh, scientific work for popularizing of scientific knowledge is ne uh, it's, uh, generally not successful in Europe because the general level of knowledge in Europe is much higher with the American level compared with the American level. Why I speak about what I spoke about? Because Rachel Carson was a good example of American scholar. Not only a researcher of the marine biology, but he wrote a popular uh, scientific works uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for, the book, for the book market. And the first one about uh, a sea, a sea around us, and the second one, and the most seminal, a silent screen. A silent screen described which is the perspective of human, humankind in the case of uh, uh, globalization of uh, artificial, uh, artificial materials like pesticides and uh, fertilizers. According to the conclusion of, uh, conclusion of uh, uh, Rachel Carson, we can see this is the basis of his uh, conclusion, how increase the global pesticide on the application on the modern agriculture and the global fertilizer use. It was a great blow up uh, after the Second World War. And the conclusion of, uh, uh, conclusion of Rachel Carson, one day will happen, we open the window and no any sign of uh, birds. Because if we apply the pesticide, which kill, for example, insects, we are looking at a chain of consumption. This is the insects, uh, small animals, and birds, and predators. And we cancel the basis of this pyramid, whole of other it's fall down, falling down. Therefore, approaching the day, according to the conclusion of uh, Rachel Carson, when open the window and total silence. Because all of the animal world we destroyed. Started with insect, but any others on the chain, on the logic on the chain of uh, consumption. Uh, collapse. And finally, not only the biosphere will uh, cancel, but because a uh, human is a part of the biosphere, the human civilization will uh, destroy with this operation. And very interesting, recently, if uh, you look uh, and read uh, this conclusion on the newspaper, of course, of course, it's true. But very interesting, in the 60s, 
when published this book, it's totally this, uh, it's uh, it's uh, transformed the global thinking. In United States, on the 60s, had two issues which transformed the American uh, political culture. The first one is our ecological problems, and the second one, uh, the the Black Lives Matter in the contemporary version. Uh, and uh, uh, after book of Richard Carson, this is the starting point, appearance of environmental policy and the environmental research. Two directions launched this uh, uh, ecological thinking, a scientific, uh, scientific direction. Almost each of discipline, like geography, like sociology, like phil philosophy, like history, like uh, uh, anthropology, founded uh, environmental branches. And recently I speak about the environmental history. Other direction are uh, environmental and ecological problems became a part of public policy. Two decades later, founded a Grünen, a Green Party in uh, uh, Germany, and according to last uh, uh, election, result after uh, result of the last election, he and the uh, Grünen, a uh, Green Party in Germany, uh, we are part of the of the next uh, German uh, government. Okay. Two direction: environmental policy and the movement. The other direction: environmental research. Uh, the most important milestone only I survey: Earth Day, first time, 22nd April, and uh, first time it's passed uh, 1970. Founded the Greenpeace, the most influential. Uh, uh, international international uh, uh, organization of the of the of the green power and uh, founded the club of Rome. A club of Rome. It's interesting construction. Recently, not so seminal, but in the 70s, it was a great idea. Uh, a little bit, uh, the member of the club of Rome changed around 100 person, half businessman, half scientist, and somehow tried to find a comprom uh, compromise in the case of environmental and economic problems. Uh, and the next milestone, a first international conference in the case of environmental problem in Stockholm, uh, uh, 1972, uh, about global warming, ozone layer, the key uh, notes, environmental monitoring and regulation. Uh, and uh, the next milestone, a Brutland Commission, Gruhal and Rutland, a former Norwegian uh, Prime Minister, was, and he organized a commission, member of a commission, it's, uh, 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 I remember, 50, 56, 56 or 50, 58, I don't know, exactly one Hungarian member has, one biologist, Ishvan Lang, and uh, this uh, commission report introduced a term of sustainable growth. It's important. Uh, important uh, conclusion. Uh, sustainable growth means some compromise between the uh, general uh, intention of uh, economic growth and, uh, and somehow the saving in physical, physical environment. According to definition of sustainable growth, sustainable development uh, is development that meets uh, uh, the needs uh, of the present without compromising the ability of future generation uh, to meet their own needs. And uh, Rio de Janeiro, the next one, and Kyoto Protocol, uh, and the last one, the Paris Protocol. But look at the environmental history, because our subject, not the general uh, environmental policy, but look at the, in, the green history, the environmental history. If we, we uh, look at environmental history, look at the first, uh, Institutional background. If we are looking at the institutional background, not by chance, the first international organization founded in the United States. If somebody interesting for that on this uh, website address, you can see the recent uh, uh, state, re recent status of American environmental history research. And the second one, European in, uh, for environmental history. I am member, found, founded member of the European organization is founded St. Andrews. Somebody you know where is St. Andrews? It's a Scotland. It's a Scotland, North Scotland. The majority of, uh, 
of uh, of uh, member of of uh, royal family is a student of uh, of uh, uh, Saint Andrews and very interesting no public transport because everybody has enough money <laughs> for taxi or personal car for that it's a classical campus near to the uh, near to the uh, sea uh, there is uh, somebody know it's an old movie a chariot of fire chariot of fire no. Chariot of Fire. It's a story about the uh, about the uh, Olympic Games uh, mm -hmm. after the First World War, and this is the uh, rivalry between the professional or amateur uh, sport. And uh, the Chariot of Fire. It's a good movie. It's uh, readable, uh, uh, lookable recently too. I, I suppose anyway. Uh, this was one, one of my favorite. And uh, the seaside uh, on the seaside of Saint Andrews. Uh, made this movie. Okay, how we can define the environmental history? Look at the story, look at the story, uh, next uh, part of the, of the, of the course. Uh, for the environmental history necessary to define the field of environmental history, Donald Hughes, uh, he died in the last year, uh, defined environmental history with uh, three criteria. The first criteria, culture and nature continuity. The physical environment and society we can define as ecosystem, a uh, historical ecosystem is the part of the same, not separable, one to one. The second one, the methods. The methods is open. Uh, environmental history and use natural and social science, scientific methods. And necessary to focus on uh, stratifying time and the space concept. Later, I will decide. Look at the first method. How we can define that physical environment change in the history of the past? Field evidences and documentary evidences. A field evidences, according to category, may be physical, chemical, or biological evidences, and documentary evidences, and written and iconographic evidences. For example, in the case of smoke, you know which is the smoke. Smoke and fog combined to smoke appear in London even in the Middle Ages. Why? Because used coke for the heating system. Therefore, a lot of small material float on the air everywhere. And not by chance, it's very high. Uh, high uh, density of uh, uh, of uh, how the name is uh, there is a special term it's uh, uh, concentration of uh, of water on the atmosphere is very high therefore a floating uh, uh, floating powder it's uh, became a concentration surface for 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 uh, for water vapor therefore the smoke is a fog near to the earth, to the, to the soil, finally, but very dangerous. Why? Because in the case of uh, aspiration, you, uh, you, uh, the smoke uh, uh, concentration of, uh, of uh, uh, powder, for example, came from the low efficiency ovens, because the burn in oven, very low efficiency. Only 20% of, of, uh, of coke able to transform to, uh, transform to uh, heating energy and majority of them on the chimney it's floating out. And if you, uh, for example, uh, 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 in the case of, in the, in the process of aspiration, uh, going inside of the lung, the small powder, never go back. Therefore, decrease the capacity of, uh, of uh, how the name is, uh, how the name is, it's, uh, uh, function of, of, of lungs and, and, uh, and lungs capacity. This is the same problem with the miners, because in the, in the cave it's very high, in normal situation, very high. Uh, the density of, of, uh, of stone and boulders. Okay, uh, read and, uh, yeah, but I didn't close, <laughs> I didn't find a good dictionary. Uh, and on the paintings, 
made in different period of London, around London, you can follow how increased the smog, smog in London started in the Middle Ages and increased until the Second World War and after the introduction of new heating system disappeared. And recently no smog in London. But for centuries, century by century, increased the intensity of uh, smog. And you can, and the researcher was able to follow on the paintings, change the color of, of, uh, of uh, uh, clouds, for example, starting with white, and finally in the 19th century, the color of clouds became yellow, deep yellow for smog. Okay, written or and iconographic evidences, and finally archaeological evidences. It's a it's a crossroads uh, uh, situation, uh, cross border situation because archaeological evidence in some part is either natural, other part iconographic. Good. The first evidences evidence which verify a uh, physical environment and the climate change in the historical past, a dead of chronology. The trees which are living seasonal climate, its grow are tree rings. And if you analyze a tree rings, able to reconstruct quantity of precipitation and intensity of solar radiation. In uh, America, it's a good place be a good place because uh, uh, living uh, uh, long, life, long living uh, uh, pines, for example, biblical pines or mammoth pines, uh, uh, and able to reconstruct for more thousand years long tree ring chronology. In the case of Europe, a little bit uh, more difficult to construct tree rings chronology because uh, uh, the longest life uh, tree is an oak, only four or five hundred years long, but this is the technology of floating, uh, floating chronology, living tree, and the second uh, tree which uh, came from the, for example, local cathedral constructed in the Middle Ages, and take one sample from the cathedral trees and overlap, and uh, this is the feed box, take a uh, fossilized uh, tree, and for this uh, overlapping technology, able to construct uh, in I North Ireland uh, back to before Christ uh, uh, 540 uh, 52, or Rhine Valley is um, a bit much longer. Okay, the next one isotope analysis. Isotope analysis uh, in the uh, atmosphere there are two oxygen. The first one, oxygen normal uh, 16, and the ne next one is a much smaller proportion uh, uh, oxygen uh, oxygen uh, uh, 80 uh, the proportion uh, to uh, 500 oxygen uh, normal one oxygen modified exists in the atmosphere in consequence of uh, of uh, temperature level near to the soil uh, therefore if oxygen like for example ice cover on the greenland and uh, uh, drilling and take, taking a sample uh, on the, on the uh, uh, Greenland area, able to reconstruct uh, the change, long term change of, uh, of climate. But very interesting, I uh, met in uh, Brno University, University of Brno in Czechia, uh, one uh, geographer colleagues who participated in uh, a uh, Greenland program. A very, very special place because it's a very cold place. And uh, uh, Greenland officially it's uh, uh, under uh, under uh, under control of Denmark, but its uh, uh, practical level is a public place. And very interesting, there is a rivalry between different uh, camp and different scientific camp in the alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption. It's a short drinks, uh, short drinks because not not uh, reasonable drink wine or, or beer because too high quantity of uh, water, short drinks. And my question, it's was very interesting, it's a prejudice, it's a national prejudice, you can see, you can apply, which is the winner of the Greenland uh, alcohol drinking uh, uh, championship? Which nation? Of course, Russian, 
question. But the most important question, which nation is the second one? You can use the national prejudice. Muslim countries is closed out. No, no, Hungary is a poor country. No camp, no scientific camp. Sorry? Germany. German not. not uh, I visited the Germany, I stayed in Germany in Munich University, but uh, it's, a, it's a very short, very small. Uh, for example, this is the uh, uh, in, uh, consequence of westernization. Decrease the, the size of cup, 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 uh, cup of uh, short drinks. For example, during my childhood, uh, the, uh, the, the shorter one is 3 centimeter and the larger one is a, uh, is a 5 centimeter. Uh, for example, in Transylvania, the shorter one is 5 centimeter and the larger one, 1 deciliter. And in Russia, I, because uh, I am partly geographer and I visited two times in uh, 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 in uh, Soviet Union, in Odessa, University of, of Odessa, and I, it's, it's quite a hard place was in the 80s. For example, in the student hostel had a huge quantity of cockroaches. You know which is the cockroach. Yeah, and switch off the light, and I felt appeared the sentinels on my legs, the free sentinels. And whole of the student hostel had a lot of 10,000 cockroaches. And we wasn't able, we weren't able to sleep. Because if somebody's body walking a cockroach, it's not so easy to sleep. And we asked the uh, uh, Russian colleagues, which is the possibility. First time, he didn't understand which is the problem. This cockroach is not dangerous for life. Yeah, it's true, but it's, if somebody not accustomed, it's very strange. And finally, suggested to me, yeah, <coughs> not possible to kill each cockroaches. Necessary to find the way living together with the cockroaches. And there is a special manner of short drinks. If you drink a short drinks, a huge quantity, quickly, turn out the bulb on the It's not usable information for you, but <laughs> I apply. Uh, each of three, three states, we, we stayed in uh, Odessa and Simferopol and Yalta in this area three weeks, three weeks, and each evening we closed two deciliter, two times, each evening. Switch of the light was the consciousness. Cockroach is walking over body. No bother. No bother. And when I came back to Hungary, it was very hard to decrease the quantity of the, of the, of the alcohol because we are so accustomed. Uh, but uh, if somebody drinks too much uh, short drinks, there is a, a consequence that they wake up uh, uh, it's, uh, at the dawn around uh, 4 or 5 o'clock. The mouth is it's very dry, <laughs> somehow. But uh, after the sunrise, the cockroaches disappear. No problem. This was the solution. Okay. Uh, but turn back to the story. The second one. The Russian are the first one. And which nation the second one in the competition? United States. No. Ireland. Ireland. No. Poland. No. Poland. Who, who spoke the Poland? You? No. no. Yeah, Poland, sorry. Sorry about uh, Poland, why? Because they can drink a lot. Uh, Poland, uh, Poland or, or Polish? Polish people. Polish people for 150 years long period under Russian control. Because Russia uh, conquered uh, between the late uh, uh, decade of last decade of the of the uh, 18th century until the end of uh, First World War, Poland disappeared from the map of Europe. Therefore, lived under Russian control. First, and secondly, if you read who 
the most important, which country the most important exporter of uh, vodka? The first one, Russia, and the second one, Poland. Not by chance. There is a practice, a routine. Okay, uh, but turn back to the scientific knowledge. Uh, this is the most important indicator. It's a drill, take a sample, and able to reconstruct the climate changes. This is the sample, and it's very usable, very usable, and very dangerous sample. Why? Because in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, ice sample, there are a bulb, air bulbs, which save the construction of atmosphere in the past. First, secondly, it's possible there are a bacteria or virus from former part of the of the evolution. And uh, one of the most one of the important danger of recent global warming, the northern period, the frozen area, it's uh, meltdown, and a lot of germs or bacteria launched, which no immunity in the contemporary population. Okay. The next one, glacier, a glacier, you know that somebody visited in the mountain area, it's a frozen river, it's a frozen river, and the length of the frozen river, it depends on the climate. Uh, uh, for example, snowy, cold snowy period increased the size of uh, glacier and uh, recently on the time of global warming, meltdown. Therefore, on the peripheral area of civilization, uh, glacier would indicator the climate changes. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, snow of, uh, of uh, uh, corner glacier in Alps, you can see this is the past, uh, last two uh, millennia, uh, how changed the climate. You can see it's period named uh, Red Ice Age. It's a cold period, coldest period, all of the human history, and this is the recent global warming. Okay, for example, this is animation. Here, a glacier, Warner glacier. Okay, one other uh, diagram about how change a uh, glacier, it's a other glacier, alleged glacier, or other indicator, other indicator, the sediments. Sediments transported by river, wind, or glaciers, places of accumulation, sea, ocean, lakes. For example, this uh, uh, diagram shows how many uh, layer, how length the layer of sediments on the Crimean Peninsula between Ukraine and Russia, and indicator of intensity of rain because it's rainy, more rainy period uh, able to move more sediments and dry period less. And for example, uh, uh, accumulation of sediments would example a Rhone River flowing into the Lake Geneva in Switzerland. Okay, uh, other possible indicator of climate change uh, is a special Hungarian or Hungarian connection has a, a volt thermometer. Uh, probably you know the uh, small uh, rodents, like, for example, uh, mouse, like uh, wolves, like rats. These rodents very sensible for climate changes and moving, moving according, following uh, climate changes. Warmer period is moving northward, and recently, for example, in the Carpathian Basin, recently leaving half of the uh, of the fauna of Balkanic Peninsula. Why? For global warming. And the animal able to follow the moving of, uh, of uh, climate change. But very interesting that the plants able to be. The plants. Look at, for example, one uh, forest. One forest, oak forest. Oak is the most typical European tree. Oak forest, if you need. This is one oak forest. Change the climate. Which is the strategy of the, of the forest of moving? Uh, this is the warming period. Therefore, the oak necessary to escape northward. 
the cast deformity. Therefore, the new tree is grown in the northern part of the tree and drying on the southern part of the tree. And the speed of tree moving <coughs> one kilometer per four kilometer. One forest acre able to to move. The same forest because the same genetical background, but moving. If the climate change speed is faster, drying out all of the forest. But if even an oak forest able to move northward or southward or adaptate somehow to the climate change. Not only animals, but turn back to the animals. You know the night birds. There is one important hunting peculiarity of the night birds. It's uh, the first one hunting during the night. You know, a lot of uh, night birds living inside in the court of this building. Two or three. It's dangerous to uh, sit down uh, under the trees because it's shifting down. <laughs> and there, during the night, and the second one not able to digest the hair and the skin. Therefore, it's floating back to the nest and vomit. And if locate a night bird into the cave, it's a closed place, a vomited skins and the hairs, it's accumulate thousand years by per, per thousand years. And, and because the rodents is moving, the proportion of different sensibility of the rodents rats, mouse, and uh, other rodents, with help of, uh, of a proportion calculation, able to reconstruct the climate changes. For example, for Hungarian geologist and the speleologist, his mother reconstructed the climate changes for the last, uh, uh, last uh, uh, 12,000 years, long period. You know the pollen analysis. Uh, the pollen analysis. The pollen is the most uh, uh, stable part of the of the plants, able to survive uh, 20 or 25,000 long, uh, long period. And uh, the most important trend of the pollen are the swamp area, because pollen down to the swamps accumulate and. Uh, like in the case of, uh, of oxygen reconstruction, drilling, take a sample and able to reconstruct how change the climate. For example, this is the climate reconstruction of the last uh, uh, 20,000 uh, long period. This is the first uh, layer spruce, it's a pine. And later appear the different form of the of the of the uh, trees, and later appear the grass, different form of the grass. This is the warming trajectory. And the last one are documentary sources, uh, narrative sources, economic sources, pictorial evidence, newspapers, uh, and so and so, individual sources or institutional sources, uh, official letters, ship logbooks, uh, systematic meteorological observation, and based on these uh, uh, documentary sources, you can transform with, uh, uh, with scale of uh, quantification, and uh, we can transform a precipitation and, and, uh, temp and uh, temperature uh, time series. Okay, and this is the, no, Start a little bit because I have five minutes. Look at the space and time. You remember the first one, metal, and the second, a space and the time. Uh, look at first the time. If looking at the time, the first question: How we can able measuring the time? The first calendar is which constructed on the human history based to astronomical experiences. Recently, there are sun calendars and moon calendar. Recently, we are using the sun calendar. But you can uh, tell example to the moon calendar. Moon calendar. 
Jewish calendar or the classical Muslim calendar, uh, uh, moon calendar, to my mind. <laughs> okay? Uh, sun or moon calendar. After uh, uh, discovery of uh, domestication of plants and animals, increased the importance of seasons, of vegetation periods. Vegetation periods. After appearance of, uh, of great religion, liturgical hours. Uh, in the case of, uh, of uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim world, five times a day in the Christian. Not recently, because we are a happy Christian. Happy Christian. Yeah, I am free time or that free time we can meet, but not so important. It's happy, happy Christian. But in the traditional time, holy time. Four times, four times. In the Muslim world, five, not so much, not so much. Because in the traditional Christian world, four times, not five, four times. But the proportion are the same. And mechanical clocks. Very interesting, very interesting. The mechanical clocks invented in the 12th century, 12th century, and located to the tower, a city hall tower or, or the tower of the, of the church. And very interesting, first generation of the, of the mechanical clocks, half of them turned right to black and uh, left, uh, right, to, right to left and left to right. And quite general, in the age, in the century of enlightenment, standardized. Therefore, the direction of the clock, left to right. But some cities in Europe, on public place, left the other version. If you visit to Prague, capital of Czechia, Czech Republic, in the district of Josefo, some mechanical clocks turn backward. And the tourists who not in a uniform, very surprising. It's a two o'clock and half past, uh, uh, half past uh, before was uh, uh, half past two. Yeah, because the scale is other direction. And, of course, in the age of enlightenment, standardized. Uh, measuring of tool, sundial. You know, this is the simplest version. One stick and the scale. There is a weakness in the cloudy weather and uh, during the night is those work. Uh, water clock, it's two container and flowing the water one to another. Incense burner, Buddhist, uh, uh, Buddhist uh, 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 what is the uh, uh, the name is uh, living place of monks not a church but uh, living together a lot of monks Temple? No temple. Monastery. Monastery, thanks a lot. But a little bit later. <laughs> my, my dictionary not so activated. Okay, monasteries, incense burner used, for example. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, for example, um, in the, in the uh, martial art like uh, uh, Kung Fu, used incense burner. Jump to the, uh, to the uh, table and start incense burner, this is one term, one tournament time, uh, and the winner who left in the, in the table. And in the case of uh, 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 Christian monastery, much more use the candle, and finally appear the mechanical box. Okay, 